Hello, everybody, and welcome to this edition of the Alliance Group Podcast. We have John Alford uh, from Five Rings Financial in San hey. Diego, uh, all the way from the West Coast uh, to the Best Coast, the East Coast. <laughs> welcome, John. Hey, Samuel, thanks. It's great to finally get to be here with Alliance Group and in Stratton Studios. Yeah, it's fantastic to have you. So, uh, John, we were, we were really looking forward uh, to getting you into the studio. You've obviously uh, been with Five Rings for many years now. Uh, but in the military, serving the military for over over 40 years now. Oh, with both my time uh, in Navy ROTC, active duty, and now as a defense contractor, it has literally been almost 40 years. Thanks for reminding me. I feel, I feel <laughs> old now. 40 years. But yeah, oh, but we'll, we'll keep that almost in there as long as I can. <laughs> like the last day of August. Uh, crap, it's now been 40 years. All right. That's crazy, man. <laughs> well, first of all, thank you so much for, for your service. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's it, it's been an, an amazing career. Kind of a dual career because you've also, um, in, in in addition to, to what your your service in the Navy, um, which we are definitely going to talk about, you've also been with Five Rings Financial now uh, since 2014, um, mm-hmm. and you have a very specific uh, niche that you serve. Um, why don't you tell us a, a little bit about what you do with your work with Five Rings Financial when it comes to servicemen and service okay. women and their retirement and protection plans? Okay, yeah. I mean, you know, we're not, with Five Rings Financial, we're not exclusively a military and veterans-focused uh, uh, company. So right. I, I still work with, you know, other friends. But one of my, you know, my network, my natural community that I'm part of is the Navy and the Marines uh, there in San Diego, uh, because I am in a close knit specialty, mm-hmm. I have friends from other services uh, in that specialty. Right. So I I like uh, part of what I do is use the Five Rings Financial Education model uh, model, mm-hmm. but educate about how the military benefits uh, can be leveraged into personal plans, either while you're serving if you qualify, definitely after you get out. Right. Uh, and so how to how to use some of the advantages and benefits we have in the military. Uh, and then leverage that uh, for financial security later in life. So you obviously can help anybody, um, but you do have that that, that very specific knowledge uh, when it comes to veterans uh, who who have questions about their their retirement benefits or their VGLI or or, or, or SGLI life insurance. Um, you can absolutely help them with that. Let, let's actually take a step back, uh, John, and I, I want to give people a little bit more background about what what you've done in the Navy uh, for 40 years, a one of the coolest jobs uh, that you can do in the military, <laughs> a, a literal bomb technician uh, right out of Hurt Locker, uh, EOD, right? What right. does EOD stand for? Yeah, yeah, that stands for Explosive Ordnance Disposal. Oh, that's so uh, cool. That is a little redundant. Most ordnance nowadays is explosive. You know, we're not out there breaking arrows in half. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I make that joke, and it's kind of an old and tried and true one. But, right. yeah, it, uh, I was part of the bomb squad. Uh, now, I, I did, I was qualified to be a bomb technician. Uh, my career, I got senior a little too fast when the war started. I still got to participate. Right. And support my community, but uh, the young men and women, you know, a, bit, a little bit younger than me, they really did an awful lot. And so I, I try to give back a lot to them, help them out with, you know, transitioning both from a personal professional, but also financial perspective. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I was part of uh, my first four years in the Navy. I served on a ship. I enjoyed that. But then I transferred into the diving and EOD communities and served there for 18 years wow. and continue to work with them as a defense contractor. And, and and two tours, including tours in Afghanistan and Iraq, correct? Uh, yes, I got to go to Iraq while I was on active duty, uh, served in the counter IED task force, and then I uh, went to Afghanistan actually as a contractor, but right. still helping the, the EOD and counter IED communities. That's incredible. Uh, so thank you once again for your service. Um, it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's been an amazing career. Um, and you, so we, we actually had a caller call in and ask this. So how does this cool bomb squad guy uh, get involved in financial yeah. services? You, you know, uh, as, as I told the caller, I think it's just because I'm blessed. Right. Uh, get to have these great careers uh, that really mean a lot to me. Actually, a friend of mine I worked with in the in the explosive ordnance disposal community uh, first introduced me to a different company. I kind of call it one of my practice companies mm-hmm. uh, that uh, I was actually able to get started and get licensed uh, part time while I was in the military. And it was right before I decided to make the Navy a career. So it was good to explore this industry. Right. But let's just be honest, the time and the company wasn't right mm-hmm. uh, for me. Uh, nothing. Well, 
I, just, I won't go any further into that. Just Sometimes be positive. it just right. needs to be a good yeah. fit. Right, and it was. And uh, and then later I was introduced to a financial vehicle called uh, Fixed Indexed Annuities. Yep. Uh, but then also the timing wasn't right. That was right before I went to Iraq. It's kind of hard to help clients when you're in a war zone. Right. But fortunately, those products aren't risk. We'll probably talk about that. Let's not go too far sure, down that sure, right sure. now, I guess. But 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 then later, uh, I was actually at a VFW post. Mm-hmm. And the young lady that was working there, she and her husband and I were talking about uh, financial and investing type things as we cleaned up. I didn't even know she was in financial services. Huh. I wasn't planning on going back into them. I was working as a defense contractor. I mentioned saving my mom's retirement. Her husband said, that sounds like something Trudy does. And that's how I was introduced to Five Rings Financial. And uh, through Trudy them, Kaiser. Yeah, Trudy Kaiser. She's wow. one of our vice presidents at Five Rings. Yep. Through Five Rings, introduced to the Alliance Group. And as you said, it's the good fit, uh, the values of these companies, the fact that, uh, like as an EOD tech, I am helping with safety and security, right. is a great fit for me. And, and you, yeah, so you you really do have a passion in uh, in preparing for this podcast. We were we, we were talking about several topics. One of the things that came up was you had a securities license before, so you 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 had been able to get people into you know market products, market type mm-hmm. products where you could gain, you could also lose. You you really didn't enjoy um, the experience of putting a client in, in, in into something that, that, that well, might go down, right? Yeah, well, Samuel, let me mention it this way. Uh, you, you know, I've said I'm a bomb tech and I like helping up other bomb techs. Right. Some of my clients also know how to build bombs, not only take bombs apart. I really <laughs> didn't like losing their money. Right. Uh, right. I, you know, I say that jokingly, but, uh, you know, whether it's my mom, whether it's friends, whether it's fellow service members, the, the fact that in the security side of our business, I, we sometimes call that the risk license because right. you're licensed to put people's money at risk. Mm-hmm. And and just to be honest, I didn't like that. I've got some friends that are very good at that. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they help people out that I can't because I don't have that license. It's just it wasn't the there wasn't the fit for me right. where where I can help people with peace of mind, sleep well at night, you know, swan insurance. I think I've heard you use that exact term mm-hmm. in this room. Yep. Uh, you know, swan insurance, where there's time and a place to have money in the market. Uh, you know, as Warren Buffett and others say, the U.S. market is the one of the great ways to build wealth, but there's also a time and place to say, I need to know that I know this part of my money will be there. Right. And that's what I like doing with Alliance Group, with Five Rings, with some of our partner companies. Yeah, and you know, ec- Ec- uh, sorry, equities can be very <laughs> sexy. You know, there's obviously the, the the big upside. So, you know, people can overlook some of these safe products, but yeah. these safe products can have a massive, massive impact. As you've seen, you, you, you've already uh, kind of referenced it a couple of times. You were able to save your mom's retirement. Tell us about that story. Okay. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's a great story, both of in financial services and my opportunity to serve in the military, because... Mm-hmm. I found out about a product, it's it's called the Retirement Vehicle of the Future by nobody less than Tony Robbins. Uh, so, you know, not us here that are in the right. industry bragging about our products. Tony Robbins even says in his, you know, book that's like a brick, right. <laughs> uh, you know, this it's a financial vehicle that your money never goes in the market, but mm-hmm. you get credits based on when the market goes up. Right. Uh, so mm-hmm. I found out about this product uh, through one of the practice companies I was with. And uh, I just called that one of the previous times I was licensed. Mm-hmm. And in 05, 06, I was able to put uh, about two thirds of my mom's retirement assets in a fixed, in, a couple fixed index annuities. Uh-huh. Fast forward a couple years was when I went to Iraq. Wow. You know, I'm, I'm helping manage my mom's money, but you know, in 08, 09, probably most people remember what happened, right? Yeah, the market, absolutely. The media called it a market correction. People lost up to half their money in the market, in their real estate. It was called the Great Recession. Right. I'm in Iraq. If I was trying to trade my mom's account in the stock market, it, there was nothing we could have done. Right. But instead, she, her money did not go down. She was already retirement aged by then, even though she was still working. She was still taking RMDs out. Mm-hmm. When the market goes down like that and you take RMDs out, which is what the government makes you take out, whether you need the money or not, you'll never recover. Right. Where in my mom's case, because she never had those losses, when the market started going back up in 2010, she went up when the market went up. Mm-hmm. She's gotten about 90 cents of income for every dollar we put in there wow. and still has almost a dollar for every dollar as well. It worked 
perfectly. It's like the textbook case of why they should look at these fixed indexed annuities. Right. It's, uh, you know, people don't, uh, again, it, it tends to be overlooked, but it's important. Yes, you know, depending on your age, depending on your situation, it, it, it always makes sense to have your money balanced and, right. and sometimes riskier products, sometimes safer products. Um, but yeah. as as you showed right there, uh, balance is very yeah. important and, and making sure that you have your money allocated in the right places that make sense for you and, where you're at. Right. And one of the ways to balance that, not to take a huge detour, but, you know, in the military, we have the thrift savings plan, which is like a 401k. Right, Defense contracting, yep. you have 401k plans. Maybe use that for your market risk exposure when you leave a company and you have a 401k or you leave the government, military, you have a TSP, why not look at rolling that into something you don't have to worry about anymore? Right. And then it just grows almost on autopilot while you also have some exposure possibly to the market in a 401k or, or another TSP account. Yeah. Just one thing I like doing, I did that when I left the military, when I leave defense contractors to get a new contract. Mm -hmm. And I recommend doing that for other folks. So maybe when they leave the military, start a 401k for your market exposure, look at something safe for money you already have put aside. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's, it's not, it's not just uh, fixed index annuities that you deal with. You deal in several different types of annuities. You also uh, are passionate about life insurance and, and making sure uh, that your clients are protected with the new type of life insurance, living benefits. Right. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. So it's uh, uh, something specific to, veterans, and I know something that you wanted to make sure that you covered is um, something that you help them with is, is kind of understand what their protection benefits are. Um, and that brings up the conversation of SGLI versus VGLI. Now, for those of us who might not know what those acronyms <laughs> stand for, can, can you kind of tell us about SGLI and VGLI? No, we're, we're, we have to get into acronyms, right? You're talking, <laughs> to, a mil, to. You're talking to a career military man. Yep, absolutely. Uh, so uh, just the 10,000-foot the, the view is mm -hmm. serviceman group life insurance is a benefit that all active duty personnel have. Mm -hmm. And you can have up to $500,000 of, it's called, SGLI because it's serviceman group life insurance. So you have five up to five hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars of group life insurance benefit. It's very cost effective. The government subsidizes some of it. It's also just based on that you're a serviceman. This is or during woman. active duty. This is only active duty and in the reserves. Gotcha. Uh, so and it's the same price no matter if you're an eighteen year old starting boot camp. Or your, you know, Admiral Franchetti, she's our chief of naval operations. Mm -hmm. uh, just quick sidebar, she'll be the last CNO that's actually senior to me for date of rank. So we mentioned about how wow. long I've been around. I'm like, <laughs> you know, it's one thing when, like, the starting quarterback of your favorite pro team is younger than you are. Yeah. When the chief of naval operations is younger <laughs> than you are, you start going, I've been around a while. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, Admiral Finchetti, uh, at her age, pays the same amount as the youngest sailor oh, wow. or soldier or Marine at boot camp. Mm -hmm. Or not quite yet soldier, sailor, Marine. They're, they're boots. So SGLI so, comes when you are uh, either active duty or in the reserves. You get that, and right. it's very cost effective. I, I think it's $30 a month, maybe something wow. like that for $500,000 coverage, right? right? So we'd have a hard time. That's a no-brainer. Yeah, that's a no-brainer. And, and, right. and, and I, I think part of your job is, you know, because, uh, you know, ser service members come to you and say, I don't even know what this is. That's GLI. Like, I think it's some life insurance. I don't know how much I'm right. paying. So, yeah, how much should I have? You know, I don't have any family. It's like, well, get it now and just forget about it. Right. Have 500000 or whatever the max is your whole career. Part of your job is, is just, you know, reassuring yeah. them, like, that is a good thing. Keep that. Don't get rid of that. Hold on to that. Uh, are, are you generally encouraging them to get the full $500,000? Uh, definitely. Absolutely. Definitely. Because, you know, you, you never, you know, we all get busy, mm -hmm. right? And there, I mean, obviously you and I, we're life insurance agents. We love it. Right. So we think about it. But most times, you know, you're, you're trucking along in the military, you're getting orders, you're getting promoted, more responsibility. You find that special someone, you get married, you have kids. Next thing you know, you have a lot more financial responsibilities but you might only have the 50000 or or 100000 right. minimum for SGLI where you may need much more. Right. It's so inexpensive. You know, most of us yeah. blow $30. Yeah. You know, we'll go out to lunch or dinner tonight and blow $30 Easily. before we think about it, right? So I say just go ahead and get all of it. Mm -hmm. Keep it your whole career because the other thing is 
when you get out, now we'll bridge over to VGLI. VGLI. So this is this, once you've left the this, service. This transitions when you leave service from serviceman group life insurance to veterans group life insurance. Right. Well, the two great things about VGLI that, that I just say, those are great benefits. I do personal plans, but these are great benefits. Mm-hmm. If you have the max SGLI, you can get the same amount of VGLI. So if you had 500,000 SGLI, you can get 500,000 VGLI. But if you leave active duty with only 100,000 or even only 50,000, you can't go up to the 500. Gotcha. So you have to have the 500000 at least before you leave. That's just another reason uh, on top of just the cost effectiveness of, of, of SJLI maxing that out. This right. adds another reason why we want to max it out because right. you have more options and, when it comes to And you to don't VGLI. have to think about it when you're worried about, okay, I'm getting out. Where are we relocating to? I have to get, you know, what's a resume? I mean, mm-hmm. some of us that have been in the military since we were in high school, yeah. you know, Navy ROTC or right to boot camp, whatever it is, it's like, how do I even write a resume? Right. right. Other people are like resumes. I do them all the time or curricula vitae. And we're like, what is that? Right. Right. So you have your VGLI. The other great thing about VGLI is it's automatic. So if you have SGLI, you can have mm-hmm. VGLI. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like you and I is as personal life insurance, we have to do what's called qualify right. for our life insurance. Well, military folks that are retiring are generally older in their late thirties or forties. Mm-hmm. We've done some interesting things for our country. We've probably banged up our bodies. We may have even had traumatic things happen to us. Right. And unfortunately, there are some friends of mine I cannot cover. So they get VGLI automatically. Uh If you have SGLI, you can have VGLI. Yep. So at a at a minimum, at a floor, I want to make sure that that folks that are transitioning have that availability. Mm -hmm. Then we see if we can do better. Right. Right. So So because SGLI, no brainer makes perfect sense from a financial perspective. Once you transition over to VGLI, depending on your age, um, that might be still a very good option right. for, for you to keep. But as as people get older with this VGLI, that's basically, your your price can go up, is it right. is it every year? No, it's not every year, but, but that's the difference between SGLI and VGLI, where SGLI, that's why I bring up Admiral Finchetti, mm-hmm. that, or Franchetti, that it's SGLI is cost. not based on your age. Right. VGLI is for, just to use the actual professional term, mm-hmm. it's five-year renewable term. Gotcha. You and I get that, but somebody might not. Sure. Every five years, based on your age, in five-year increments, the price mm-hmm. goes up. Mm-hmm. So let's say someone retires in their late 30s, early 40s, this $500,000 of coverage is actually a good price mm-hmm. in the marketplace. Yep. But what happens is, because that term is only five years, at 40 or 45, it goes up. It gets a little more expensive. But then when you hit your 50s and you become the vintage that I am looking at 60 in a few years, mm-hmm. it starts getting very expensive right. for the coverage. Mm-hmm. Not incredibly expensive, but then when you hit your 70s, you are basically paying the highest type premiums, where instead, why don't you look at a 20 or 30 year mm-hmm. term policy? And we'll talk about you know why our term policy is not death only life insurance. Sure. But so let's just look at the cost at first. Where over a 20 or even 30 year period, because VGLI is repricing every five years, mm-hmm. you'll pay a little bit more up front. But I just helped a Marine that retired. His name's Nick, and I want to give him a shout-out because he helped me prove this, actually. He wanted to do the homework himself. Great job, Nick. Yeah, and he's a better he's better at Excel than I am. <laughs> uh, but he proved that over 20 years, it will save him. Yes, he'll pay more these first five years, maybe mm-hmm. first 10. But over that second, the back half of the policy, a 20-year term policy is so much less expensive, it'll average out to saving him $1,000 a year. Right. I have a feeling we're going to talk about why he also gets more benefits. Mm -hmm. So he gets the choice, pay less or get more benefits. But then I told him, he called on, he's like, you're kind of playing with me. I don't have to make a choice. I get both, don't I, with our policies. Yep. Yep. And and at some point, it does make sense to to, to make that comparison. To to illustrate that, uh, my father-in-law is also retired Navy. And he, as, as he approached age 65, um, he got in touch with me and he said, look, I, I know you're in life insurance. My, my veterans life insurance is, is about to go up. They, I think they send a letter letting you know what the premiums are going to go up to. Uh, luckily he was healthy. And again, this, he's 65 years old. So we were able to kind of run a comparison and get him hooked up with something that was in his budget because 
the fact was is that that VGLI price was just going to be out of his budget. So he, he wanted to keep some life insurance, uh, but he needed it to be lower cost. So we were able to do some cost comparison and get him into a 10-year term with living benefits, uh, w- w- which is what we ended up doing for him. Now, what I found myself thinking is, man, I wish he would have been thinking about this <laughs> 10, 15, 20 years ago because – it, it's hard to think about it when it was affordable for him to think about other options. But what right. I'm sure you would con- you would encourage veterans to do is to make sure that they're reaching out to you even when they are younger and that VGLI is relatively affordable. Let's take a look at your options. The earlier you take a look at your options, the more options you have well, going forward. Yeah, and, and as you mentioned, you were still able to help your dad. Right. But, but what if something had popped up medically or some condition that the military identifies but it worsens over time, and right. now we can't get you a replacement policy, and now you're faced with, you know, you maybe want this coverage for family, but it may be costing you as much as $2,200 a month. Mm-hmm. Well, if you're paying $2,200 $2, a month for five years, mm-hmm. you're pretty much self-insuring because you right. can put that money to work. And then in the case of, of possibly your father's policy, but like Nick's policy, mm-hmm. there's also the opportunity to, now that we have him covered, we could trade in some of that coverage and make a blended plan where he has 20-year term for most of the need while they're paying off their house, yep. raising their son, their youngest son, but also he could trade some in to get permanent coverage mm-hmm. that will have all, he'll have living benefits for life, he'll have the ability to grow tax-free savings, and he knows he will leave some legacy to his family. Absolutely. Where, you know, 20-year term or VGLI is going to run out, potentially, or you're going to be paying an awful lot for it. Absolutely. So, I mean, to kind of sum up, if you have SGLI, max it out. Yep. Pay that amazing like, price. I think it's $30. It goes up a little bit every year, but never it's, like what. It's incredible. So yeah. SGLI, keep that. When you switch over to VGLI, uh, it's really best to get with somebody yeah. like yourself yeah, uh, yeah. to kind of take a look at that. Well, yeah, probably uh, anywhere from a year to six months before you retire, because that way, you know, we can take a look at it. We can give you the options, you and your family, the options mm-hmm. of saying wh- what works best for you. And we know that it's in place. Right. Uh, but we don't want to start it too soon because then, you know, we do have that 20 or 30. You can go as far out as 30 years for right. a living benefits term policy. Mm-hmm. But you don't, you know, so it's a great plan, but at the same time, you know, don't, don't want to start it now. I'm, I'm not saying it's not good to have living benefits, but you have a lot of other benefits in the military, like medical benefits and disability. They'll either keep you on active duty or medically retire you. So right. living benefits works great on our family members mm-hmm. where military, a lot of our benefits are similar. They're not right. living benefits, but they work to provide some of that protection. So John is here to, to, to answer all of those questions you know, for, for it, because it, it can be complicated. If you're, you know, you're a veteran, you're, you're a service member, you know that you have these benefits, but there's not a lot of understanding a lot of times around some of these oh, and how they work. I mean, so I, yeah. strategizing and helping people kind of optimize those benefits is really what you're, it, it, what you're all about. I enjoy doing it. And, and first off, it's just fun to, like, it'd be great to meet your dad and we'd sit there and, <laughs> and talk Navy stories probably the whole time we were yep. together and not talk about money. But <laughs> but that's fun too. And that's kind of the way I like doing my appointments is, hey, let's just build a relationship, enjoy being military guys hanging out together, guys and gals. And, mm-hmm. and then, you know, as their questions come up, I mean, Nick and I covered a lot of different topics, had a great time talking. Uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, it, it's one of those good things. We have a natural affinity. You know, we probably even right. know similar people or yep. similar places. And, and then just say, hey, it is complicated. Which ones do you have questions about? Yep. And, so. and, and really, that, that goes for both protection, like we were talking mm-hmm. about life insurance, but also retirement. Um, you have seen a lot in your 40 years, uh, <laughs> almost, uh, in the biz. So what? Uh, talk about some of the changes that you've seen to the retirement system okay. uh, in your 40 years in the uh, in, in, in the Navy? Yeah, when I came in, uh, we had the traditional retirement service. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, pe- A lot of people know about that, whether you've ever served in the military or not. You do 20 years and you have a 50% pension on your base pay mm-hmm. uh, for the rest of your life. Uh, there was a, sw- a slight detour for a few years called the redux years. Uh, the people that know they're in that know about it, but it only lasted a few years. But, and they knew that wasn't the right answer. Mm-hmm. So, but they also knew the, the military pension, the 50% at 20 years, had kind of outlived its usefulness. 
Uh, a lot of a lot of folks, you know, uh, younger service members, uh, either officers or enlisted, were like, you know, this is an all or nothing plan, mm-hmm. and I don't know I'm going to stay. And now we have access to thrift savings plan again, like a four hundred one k, but my pension is all or nothing. My friends out in the private sector, many of them have a four hundred one k match. I don't have that. So both as a a long-term cost savings measure, but almost as a fairness issue as well, Mm -hmm. the military came up and and to compete with the private sector, they came up with what's called the blended retirement system. You might, many people, if they're listening to this that are military, know it just as BRS. Again, acronyms, right? We're the military. You guys got to have your acronyms. (laughs) Got to have our acronyms. (laughs) How BRS works is you come into the military, either officer or enlisted, and you can get up to a 4% match in the thrift savings plan if you contribute 5%. Okay. The trade-off is you get a slightly reduced pension if you do serve 20 years. So, But for the people who may not serve 20 years, they get that match and it's theirs to keep. There, mm-hmm. there are a few more details than that, but, sure. but that's how it basically works. So you know, the takeaway is for, for early junior service members – they're getting them. They have access to get a match in TSP, mm-hmm. like many people have in their four hundred one k. I didn't have that access. Right. I just had regular TSP. I didn't even have TSP for a number of years. But so the new retirement system is called BRS. It, it basically you still do get a pension. It's a slightly smaller one than I got, mm-hmm. but you get that TSP match your entire time in the service if you contribute the five percent to get it. Gotcha. Anything from one percent up to five percent, you get a small match. So what is your uh, what is your advice to somebody? Uh, just just overall broad ad- advice for someone who um, doesn't check their TSP, doesn't <laughs> really know what their benefits are. Um, can you give them some kind of general advice for what you're basically telling everyone to do at the, at, at least yeah. to start? In, in the you know it, it's dangerous because our finances are, are individual. Even if of you're course. in the military and there's a pay table, you know how much everybody's getting paid. It's not like the private sector where you might be making much less or much more than one of your coworkers. Or, you know we all know right. But the general rules are any place that you're getting a match. If you can afford to, you know, obviously don't go behind on your bills. Don't have credit card debt Mm -hmm. because credit cards, you know, if you're paying 12, 18, 24%, 4% match at work doesn't do you any good. You're losing. But if you can. If at all possible. If at all possible, contribute up to the match. That's free money. That is free money. It's on the table. I mean, Samuel, if you came in tomorrow morning and Lee was standing at the door going, hey, Samuel, you'd like a 4% pay raise? (laughs) Absolutely, please. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, (laughs) You know, that's what the military is doing if you're part of BRS. Mm -hmm. You're you're not losing any of your pay. You're contributing it to your future self, and you're getting a 4% pay raise. Right. Do that. TSP, for those who aren't familiar with it, Thrift Savings Plan is probably the lowest cost 401k light vehicle out there. Mm-hmm. Like as a defense contractor, the 401k I have access to way higher in fees. Mm-hmm. Also way too complicated. TSP has some basic options. They're all good. Very That's simple, not yeah. the purpose of the podcast. Mm-hmm. But but contribute that 5% to get that 4% match. Mm-hmm. The other thing I'd say is in the military, you normally get a pay raise every two years just for getting older, whether mm-hmm. you got promoted or not. When you get that pay raise, incre- make sure you're still paying 5%. If you're not to 5% yet, before that money hits your checking account, we're all going to spend all the money we make, right? Yeah. So before that happens, that's what a client of mine did. Maybe we'll talk about I'll tell her story in a second, but let mm-hmm. me go through the rules. Keep upping your contribution until you hit that 5%. Mm-hmm. You also get promotions. And those promotions, and we call those old fogey raises, those every two-year pay raises. Walk it up until you're contributing that 5%. Let it just happen. And then I'll tell you what happened for Yvette in just a minute. Yeah, let, yeah. But, af, but then after you hit that 5%, look at vehicles outside of TSP that are both tax advantaged because you're probably paying the lowest income tax. Oh, and use Roth TSP. Mm-hmm. Again, because you, you're tax advantaged while you're military. A lot of our money comes to us at, as allowances. Mm-hmm. And so you're not paying as high an income tax rate as you do after you retire. Ask me how I know. I live in California, and you know even my retirement pay is taxed. So look at those tax-advantaged uh, vehicles, whether it's Roth TSP. Also look at pre- beginning then to find things like indexed accounts, indexed annuities, tax-free indexed annuities that, that protect you from market risk. TSP exposes you to market risk like we've already talked about. Sure. Start contributing to something that then you're balanced. You have a safe money bucket 
that will go up when the market goes up, earn a good rate of return, and then you have your risk bucket over in TSP. What is the difference between, can we explain for our, our, our viewers and our listeners, the difference between a Roth TSP and a, and a traditional TSP? Okay, yes. Roth TSP is, is okay. like a, four, a Roth 401k or a Roth IRA. It was named after uh, Senator Roth. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we joke, you know, it was Roth IRA. What's his, what's his name? People right. say IRA. No, it's <laughs> Roth. Right. Uh, but, but Senator Roth proposed that, that you could pay, pay your taxes on the money up front, mm-hmm. but put it into a retirement account like the traditional a retirement accounts, IRAs, 401ks. Mm-hmm. But the reason the Roth is special is you pay taxes on it once, mm-hmm. it goes in, it grows, 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 but the money comes out tax-free. Right. So it's uh, the great analogy we use in our Money 101 seminars and when we're with clients is, would you rather pay uh, the, the sales tax on a bucket of seed mm-hmm. or pay tax on every truckload of seed of corn leaving your farm? Harvest, right. Well, it's a no-brainer, right? If I can only pay on one bucket. Pay tax on a tiny seed. Exactly, rather instead than of the truckloads. The big harvest. And and we have access to that with Roth, Roth TSP. That was a change that happened right around the time I retired. Oh, wow. That's why I recommend. Now, the, the match money goes into the regular TSP. Mm-hmm. That That's a fairly long, involved discussion. Right. But, but, so you'll have a blend there as well. Yeah, but, it, I mean, do, you, you want to match out that blend in the in the direction of the Roth yes. uh, as as much as you can and right. you will end up yeah. with a with there, a blend you know, even and you know even as an officer uh, my effective tax rate most of the time I was in the navy was below 10%. Yep. And I would love to get back to that. That's what you want to be. That's <laughs> so that's where you want to be. There are plenty of service members who don't pay income tax at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, even though their pay their base pay is tax. Yeah. Uh, it's just they're making so little, they get allowances, they live in high cost areas, so they might have a, a big mortgage, they have families. Right. There are a lot of service members that, you know, they're going to pay much more in, in taxes later in their lives. So why not max, max the Roth TSP, then look at other yeah. after tax, but never taxed again vehicles. Absolutely. Uh, and John can definitely help you do that. Uh, strategize around yeah. tax treatment uh, when, yeah. when it comes to retirement, which is so important and something that's so often overlooked. Um, you, you referenced, uh, a story about your client. Let's, yep. let, let's okay. go ahead and yep. jump into this, that. This client uh, called me up. She was referred by, uh, by some other friends who were still active duty Navy and she was about to retire and she started contributing to the thrift savings plan or TSP earlier in her career. Mm-hmm. Uh, she did put it on autopilot, never really checked on it. She did discipline herself that when she got those pay raises and promotions, she upped her allocation out of her paycheck to her TSP. Mm-hmm. She literally did not know how to log into her account while we're talking. And I'm like, okay, well, let's figure this out. Go to tsp.gov, walk her I'm through sure it. I'm sure it's actually more common yeah. Than, yeah. than someone might think. And, and in a way, that's better, right? Because you're not moving it around and trying right. to time the market. Just Sometimes let... people can shoot themselves <laughs> in, in the foot. Sometimes it's like, you know, I, I've actually heard the advice of, you know, understand, you know, make sure you set up your contributions properly and then don't log in, leave it alone. Don't look at it because you're going to be tempted to try to move things around. You should look at it probably every year and rebalance. Mm -hmm. But again, that's not necessarily our side of the business. We we like products. I've had, I've had to train clients not to expect quarterly reports. It's kind of fun, right? (laughs) But Yvette, Yvette's a great gal. She is a fun personality, you know, uh, very happy. All of a sudden, she starts laughing on the other end of the phone. And I'm like, hey, what's going on? Because we're doing this call. We're just doing a call. We're not on a Zoom or face-to-face. Mm-hmm. We've done that, too. But she starts laughing, and she goes, I had no idea. And I'm like, well, what do you mean no idea? And she goes, I have $100,000 in my TSP account. <laughs> and and she probably had started at $50 a month, maybe $100 a month. She told me she never put in a huge amount. It wasn't like she was contributing $1,000 a month and not enjoying life. Right. She just started small. Yep. Picked it up a little bit. Then she had that $100,000. And I said, Yvette, here's what we can do. When do you need access to that money? And she said, well, I'm 44. You know, I'm probably going to be working. I'm going to get my retirement. My husband's going to retire. Mm-hmm. He was. He had a couple more years in the Navy. Then they moved to Vegas. Uh, but she said, I really don't need that money. I don't know when I'll need that money. I said, well, here's the beauty of what we do. You'll never lose Odds are it'll double about every 10 years. Now, that's a forecast. It's an illustration. It's not necessarily guaranteed. Sure. But over time, we roughly double people's money every 10 to 12 years. Mm-hmm. I said, so Yvette, you said you're, you're going to turn 44 soon. 
At 54, it's 200. It's probably going to be about 200,000. At, you know, we can do a better illustration, illustration software and all that, but just sure. rough back of the napkin, yep. you know, we call these napkin presentations, you know, rounding up, it'll be 10, let's just say 11 years. So at 55, it's 200,000 at 66, it's 400,000 for money you put in 10 years ago that you didn't even notice it was going up. Mm-hmm. How does that feel? Mm-hmm. And she goes, well, well, what, what might happen to it between them? I said, it's either going to go up or go sideways. Is that Okay. Isn't that great? And she's like, and do I have to worry about it? I said, no, not really. Just mm-hmm. we'll talk once a year, see how it does. Yep. And so so she can contribute in other investment vehicles, other retirement plans, but that money is just going to be growing in the background, yep. going up and sideways, up and sideways, and in her mid to late 60s, likely be almost half a million dollars, four hundred yep. to $500,000. Yep. And it's great to have that as you know part of your retirement allocation, that, that safe money bucket that you know is growing, you know, up and sideways, up and sideways, yep. just like you said. So even when a 2007, 2008 hits, um, you know, something like that, you know that that money is safe and that it, it's, it's going to continue to it, grow. It's such a great feeling when you get the, you know, we had a little bit of that, you know, they weren't as bad, but 2020, the market just made a massive up, down, up move. Mm-hmm. And then 2023, was it 23 or 22? 22 was a down year in the market, Mm -hmm. Uh, lost uh, almost 20% in the S&P 500, no calls. Mm -hmm. Clients would open up their statements and go, it had been nice to have seen that number go up, but it didn't go down. Hmm. You know, and then when it goes up, we get to celebrate with them that, hey, it came back up. But but our account never went down. It just started from that same level that it was at. Yeah, it's incredible. Um, so, John, I, I know we, we've been talking a lot about servicemen and service women, and, and, and obviously how you can help them. But as we said before, you can help everybody. Um, what is the number one um, misconception that you see people that are coming to you um, have about finances in general, w- w- whether it's protection yeah. or, a, or a retirement um, sort of thing? You know, uh, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll say it's my my misperception. And it, it's why why when I found out uh, what we can do uh, with Five Rings Financial, with our partners through the Alliance Group, mm-hmm. um, the, the two big things to me, one of them goes all the way back to when I was 24 years old. I, uh, I, I joked with some of your team about this, you know, because some of the younger guys are like, paper boy, what's that? Yeah. <laughs> I had thrown probably a million newspapers out car windows, and I'd read the business page maybe twice, you know, when we're doing some school activity, tracking stocks uh-huh. to learn fractions or something, yep. you know, not investing, not savings. And, and I was invited by a buddy that he sat down with a financial planner from a company that focuses on the military. Uh, to not names names, it was during my first command mm-hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> in the Navy. Uh-huh. Uh, good company at the time, and but I sat down with this financial planner, and he tried to sell me permanent life insurance. Did not educate me right. on the tax favored treatment of permanent life insurance. Like a lot of people in those days, first off, I didn't need much life insurance. In those days, single and I was single, no 18. kids. SGLI was 250000 My mom was the beneficiary. She's like, I don't want that because that means something's happened to you. Uh, so I didn't take it because he sold me. Mm-hmm. Where with Five Rings, I get to educate people. Right. And when you find a product, one of our mentors, I think he sat in this exact seat, is uh, Success Leaves Clues, right? Mm-hmm. And... When you find out there's a financial vehicle out there that the upper class, the wealthy own in like 80 percentile or 90 percentile, Mm -hmm. middle income and low income people own it in the inverse of that, 10 percent, 20 percent. I wish I had been educated on the power of growing money in permanent life insurance as a tax favored strategy because that was 35, almost 35 years ago. We do an illustration of what $5 a day over 40 years can mean. Mm-hmm. I'd have an extra $500,000 to my name with money that I've long spent on whatever, right? right? Yep. Uh, so that's one misperce- misperception, that buy term and invest the rest. Buy term life insurance has a, especially with living benefits, has a huge use. We talked about right. 20 or 30 year term yeah. instead of VGLI. I still love term life insurance. Mm-hmm. But when I heard about the advantage that people could do, especially military people, uh, if we have time, I, I want to talk about uh, how we can help like young families in the military sure, sure. leverage some of their education benefits. But that's one thing. Then the other thing was when I first was introduced to Five Rings Financial, I go to a Lunch and Learn Money 101. Mm-hmm. Uh, the speaker that day was Lyle Donnelly, one of our co-founders of the company. Fantastic. And he knew I was there to almost interview him for the company, not come to the event. Right. 
I was probably just a little arrogant. Uh, you know, I won't ever <laughs> deny that. Uh, how much arrogant might be fighting words, but uh, you know, I'm a military guy and a bomb tech. But, right. Uh, long story short, Lyle brings up living benefits. Sees my jaw drop to the floor. I pick it back up. He's looking right at me, going, "You didn't know about those, did you?" Mm-hmm. And most people don't. They think life insurance is death insurance, and they're. And I think you already called it the new style smartphone of life insurance. Yep. It is amazing what it can do for people. Yes, it's there if you have an untimely death. That has happened to a friend of mine. But conversely, I have way more friends that have had heart attacks, strokes, cancer, been able to turn on their living benefits, focus on getting well, not focused on medical bills bankrupting them. So those two things are my passions to educate people on. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, protecting the money they already have you know, either from a TSP or a 401k or, or just, you know, cash, cash. Yeah. I just, uh, just played golf yesterday with, uh, my friend Bobby. Uh, and I, I, I tell the story all the time. Um, he was able to get $425,000 through his life insurance with living benefits policy that I, uh, was lucky enough, uh, to, to, to put in place for him. Um, and he's fine living his life great and, uh, was killing it down the middle of the fairway. Uh, <laughs> too, too great. Uh, Why did I hope you recover so exactly, well? Exactly, <laughs> right? Um, so I 100% agree with yeah, you there. He, yeah. It's, and, it's and, incredibly powerful. And Bobby probably had the, out, had the outcome he had because you could bless he and his family with living benefits so yep. they could focus on his recovery to come back and spank you all over the golf course. <laughs> right. Exactly. So yeah, uh, I, I, I would 100% agree with that, um, with that as, as far as a, a misconception that, that we can help educate yeah. people about. Just all the different, you, you know, most people, they hear of life insurance. They know that's what we do. They want to run screaming. And we're almost like, mm-hmm. please, let me tell you about the new style of it and how much more benefits as part. You know, most people don't think of life insurance as, as an asset. Right. But between growing money, tax advantage, and living benefits, it's a huge it's a asset. Huge asset. Yeah, it's an important. enormous asset. So speaking of assets, we, you know, you, you referenced this a little bit ago. Um, the things that you can do for families. Yes. Um, the things that you can do for for, for, for growing families. Uh, yes. And for children, actually, with these permanent life insurance plans. Let's yeah. let's talk okay. about that. Well, one thing is, you know, as, as we talked about, I got to do something really cool for the military. There are other really cool things like flying jets, flying helicopters, being a SEAL or Special Forces. Mm-hmm. You know, all these different things that are, they're a lot of fun, but they're kind of dangerous. Yes. Right. (laughs) For for some reason, there's a, there's a direct correlation between coolness and danger. At least, Uh, at least in our line of work, right? right. Uh, You know, we all see those questions on the applications. Do you parachute? Uh, Yes. (laughs) Do you dive? Yes. Uh You know, do you play with explosives? Yes. I'm like, I'm sorry, can't do a lot. What I can do though, is like in my case, we were fortunate that uh, we have two daughters they have both been educated on my veteran benefits. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were they were smart. They probably could have gotten, well, one of them actually got small scholarships, but we didn't even apply to a lot of scholarships. Let other people take advantage of that. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of states, uh, California being one of them, every state's a little different. Uh, plus, we have the GI Bill that our, our we as the service member and our families generally have good educational benefits. Mm-hmm. They're not 100%, but they're out there. So the the vehicle that most people think about for saving for college is called a 529 plan. Mm-hmm. It is tax favored. You put money in and it grows tax free. The problem is in most cases that money has to come out for approved educational expenses. Right. Well, what if your child either gets scholarships, they go like I did to Navy ROTC or ROTC, they go to a service academy, they enlist themselves, they go to a trade school, now that money is in IRS jail. Yeah. Okay. And the only way to get it out is paying tax on yes. it. Yes, or use it for another kid, and then you run out of kids, then you pay tax on yep. even more money. Yep. So what if, even though you're, you may or may not be insurable, it's always worth checking. You know, right. you might be like some of my friends that are EOD guys, but that last tour, they have a desk job. Mm-hmm. A desk job's a desk job. I can write a letter to our companies going, yes, I know them because of our shared mutual military specialty, but they don't do that anymore. They're just a desk guy. Right. Or gal. But if they can't get coverage, uh, we, we have a young agent in our in our office there in San Diego. She's pregnant with she and her husband's first baby. It's going to be a, a little girl. She's going to be here in May. About the same time, he'll likely get promoted to sergeant. So they'll have a little bit more flexibility in their money. Right. Why not look at what we call a million-dollar baby plan? Mm-hmm. 
put, let's just say a nice round number, $150, that $5 a day. Instead of writing it on one of the parents, once that baby reaches a certain age, has a social security number, pretty much has a well baby check, Mm -hmm. depending on the company, you can start buying, you you don't buy life insurance on that child for life insurance. We sure don't want anything to happen to them. Right. But they do have coverage for life now, plus they have living benefits, which I hate to say it, but sometimes when children get sick, even if you had life insurance, living benefits as a parent, you can't access your living benefits. Unfortunately, I had that happen to a couple of friends of mine. Mm-hmm. Their children got sick. We were living in Mississippi at the time. They were up at St. Jude's in Memphis like every other week. Mm. You can't you can't make your normal income doing that, and you right. want to be there with your kid. Absolutely. You so will be there I'm not wanting kid. that to happen, but the other the great benefit of it is this, this child gets that policy. They start putting $150 a month in there. When the child is college age, 18, 19 years old, they can take, let's just uh, round numbers, Mm -hmm. and this is an illustration, right? But but likely they could take up to $40,000 tax-free out, Mm -hmm. pay for college expenses. If they're using veterans' benefits or a scholarship, why not buy a a property, Mm -hmm. let, you know, pay rent to yourself and have roommates paying rent to pay back that 40,000 and the mortgage. That's just one idea. That's just, that's just one option. You don't even have to do that. You could wait five more years, maybe use college loans, Mm -hmm. take out even more money, pay the college loans back, or just let it keep growing, growing, growing. Assuming all the loans were paid back or you never took loans, this baby who's not even born yet, Let's fast forward out 70 years from now. She could turn on a stream of income, uh, per the illustration I ran for them, Mm -hmm. at $105,000 a year. Now, $105,000 isn't going to be worth $105,000 today. Right. (laughs) But at least it's a start, and you've only paid in. Oh, and you didn't pay in. You paid in until they were 70 at $150 a month. They never raised it. Right. So we're talking maybe an investment in the $20,000, $30,000 range, something like that, or whatever, eighteen. dollars Somebody do eighteen hundred times seventy in their head real quick. Yeah, right. It's, you know, maybe a hundred thousand. Let's just say a hundred thousand, but you turn on income of over a hundred thousand at seventy. Mm-hmm. Let's say because of medical advances, taking better care of herself than we do, that girl now lives to a hundred. So a hundred years from now, twenty one, twenty two, mm-hmm. she passes away at the ripe old age of a hundred. This young couple this year will then have left their great grandchildren over a million dollars after she got 30 years right. of income. These, these IUL uh, Index Universal Life Plans uh, for kids, it, they're one of my favorite um, concepts that, 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 that Fire Rings Financial works with. It's, it's truly incredible. And again, the, thing, the reason we, we love it and the reason that, that, that people are setting these up for you, it's not for the life insurance on the no. kid or even the living benefits on the kid. It's for harnessing the power of compound interest at yeah. the youngest age it, possible it, and it, making that's what makes right. produces those amazing where, results where if i put about. 150 dollars a month into a into a like you said an iul that's the exact name of the policy right i put that into an IUL, iul for me it's it's not even going to keep itself alive right you know i have to put in the policy i've had for almost 10 years now uh, i have to put 190 dollars a month into it just to keep the, the tax-free right. vehicle around it now I put more in that because let it grow and, mm-hmm. and be a, another retirement income for me. But you know, so as soon as I have grandchildren, you know, of course, hundred fifty dollars a month. Ooh, you know, absolutely. I, I'll still be the cool. I'll try to be the cool granddad. My <laughs> wife says you're not going to be the cool granddad. I'm, like, I'm still going to buy him bicycles and motorcycles and guitars and all that <laughs> stuff. But uh, but I'm also going to make sure I set those up. Because, absolutely. You know, you're they're they're just so, and and again, people always hear, oh, buy term and invest the rest. Put it in a five twenty nine. Put it in the market for them. And I'm like. Over time, the market does pretty well, but the timing issue of that 2008, 2009, great recession happening all over again, yep. what if it's the year you need that money for your kid to go to school, yep. and now you pull that money out at half of what it was worth, hey, congratulations, you only get to go to school for two years instead of four. Yep. Yeah. I have them. I have a. I have those plans set up for both of my boys, uh, Rowan and Crosby, who are nine and six now. Awesome. Uh, set them up as soon as I could. Ten days old, uh, <laughs> I, I think they were. And it's just it's awesome because the first, the, you know, the reason I'm doing it again, you're checking that box for getting something started for them. A lot of parents, new parents especially, yeah. they just know they they have this urge. Like I, I want to start saving early because they might know about the power of compound interest over time and how insanely powerful it is to start so early and give 
g- give your kids all that that runway for compound yep. interest to do its magic. But it's beautiful knowing that not only is this $150 a month it going toward savings for them, which in my head, it's all about saving, right? But I'm also, while I'm doing that saving thing, I'm also checking the box for permanent life insurance, mm-hmm. which is always a good idea to have on, on, on anybody. Yeah. Uh, and living benefits in case, God forbid, something happens. I've kind of checked those boxes. Again, not why I did it. Right. But those boxes it, are checked. It's... Yeah, you know, we we sometimes call it the triple threat mm-hmm. product. Yep. For that point right there, and, and yep. we I, we didn't even touch that. I'm glad you went there with Rowan's account and your other son's account. Cause right. I was thinking Rowan because at nine you're probably starting to see wow this number's getting kind of nice. It is. <laughs> you know? I was just checking it yesterday actually. <laughs> but uh, you Bernie know, and when when you can have you know y- there is a time and a place to have a huge whopping living benefits term policy, mm-hmm. but that's all that is. But when you add in the tax favored savings. Mm-hmm. And you add in that it's good, I think now until 120, Mm -hmm. isn't that, you know, that's amazing to me that, you know, our industry had to change. We used to only go out to 100. People are taking care of better care of themselves. And I guess the doctors have practiced medicine enough to get good at it (laughs) that, uh, that we're, we're, you know, we have to say more than two people are going to be over 100. One might live to 120. But just imagine, you know, your son six years ago, nine years ago, this little girl that's going to be born in May the power of compound interest for 120 years. And I'm sure you've looked at it, but for those who haven't, have a, one of us show you oh, that yeah. if you never touch that money, yes, it's great to have income, have tax-free loans, the infinite banking concept. Jack Waldron sat right here and yep. did a great video on that. Uh, so I won't even try to get close. But if you <laughs> use it for that, but keep the money in there, the numbers are staggering. Starting at $150 a month for like 50, 70 years, then just letting it run. And you're creating all those triple threat benefits for your kids. Mm -hmm. And then you and your wife are leaving a legacy to your great great grandchildren, maybe even your great great grandchildren. Generational. Uh, yeah. truly creating generational wealth, and, which and is what it's all about. That's that's one of the reasons the wealthy own this product, these type products in huge numbers. Yep. Because they're moving Instead of leaving money to your, I think one of your own, uh, Steve actually said this last weekend in San Diego, two weekends ago in San Diego, yeah. don't leave money to your heirs, leave life insurance Spend to your, your money, leave life yeah, insurance. Ski, the ski retirement program, spend the kids' inheritance. It's true. I mean, it's true. It's truly, you know, you you, you save your money. Uh, why would you want to save, let's say, a million dollars and then leave a million dollars behind to your kids? How about save a million dollars, spend a little bit of it buying a life insurance policy, Leave the life insurance to the kids and spend your million dollars on the dream retirement that you've worked so hard for and that you deserve. And we're not even going to talk about most states bringing estate taxes back and the federal government always talking about it, right? They want to get our tax money and life insurance contracts are still financial contracts, not part of your estate. Yep. There's so. so much, there's so many things for viewers, for listeners to talk to John about. We've only touched on <laughs> some of them uh, in the time that we had today. But, you know, uh, this industry is truly an amazing industry. Uh, we are glad that you are a part of it, uh, John. And thank you for not only for, for your service uh, to our country, but uh, for your service to all of the people who have trusted yep. you. Uh, and, and, and gotten advice from me from a financial yeah. perspective. Well, and, and, and thank you also to the Alliance Group and, uh, you know, as, as one of our key partners with Five Rings Financial, the, the great products, the marketing products y'all give us through here at the Stratton Studios, but also the access to living benefits. Of course. Again, first time I was exposed to them, even having been licensed before, thought I knew it, my jaw hit the floor. So knowing that we have a partner uh, in the living benefits life insurance space, also in the IUL space, uh, is, is just great. Thank y'all for having me today. Thanks again uh, to John Alford for joining us. Really appreciate you coming out here and seeing us. We are going to film a ton of content uh, in Stratton Studios today around all the concepts that we talked about today and more. Uh, so looking forward to that. And thanks again for joining us, John. Hey, thanks, Samuel. I had a great time. Listen to this interview and more on the Alliance Group Podcast.